Okay, welcome back to the uh, LECO study group from the Bloom and the Co Python track. This is session six. Uh, we will be talking about BFS and BFS today. My name is Karen. Uh, I'm one of the, I'm the moderator of this section. Uh, I'm also a uh, Python Co sorry. Woman the Co Python track lead. Uh, I'm here with Chanana, who is also a track lead as well, uh, and who will be the presenter today. Chanana, off you go. Thank you so much, Karen. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to talk about DFS and BFS. And hopefully, like, you know, I, I'm going to break down the agenda. And the, before we start, uh, I just want to mention that this is not an exhaustive kind of session because, as you know, there are like so many use cases for both of it. Like, if we talk about DFS alone, you can do like, I don't know, maybe five or six sessions on it. So, this session treat it more like a nudge for you to start uh, looking into it more and like maybe like a maybe to show you a flavor of what DFS and BFS are and like uh, just a problem to tackle uh, within them. So uh, I really, really encourage you to like, um, the more you to, to keep in mind that the more you see, the more you'll understand. And yeah, so today's agenda is just, uh, nothing like too weird and or, or wonky or something just like a straightforward introduction to both uh dfs and bfs we'll like we'll expand that in a bit uh and then we're going to talk about uh number of islands uh that's our problem today uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the problem as always look at a couple of test cases and then uh explain uh talk about the explanation of how we can solve it and code out the solution that we like. And we'll also talk about some next problems to tackle and end with a round of Q&A. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so what is what is DFS? We're straight away going to go into this because before we, just a quick uh, stop before we go right into DFS, um, which is depth first search. The, the two algorithms, depth first search and breadth first search are uh, traversal algorithms, which is uh, traversal is generally uh, to traverse either a tree or a graph. Um, and they have many more use cases. Like uh, you, can, you, can use, you can use both of them in many ways, uh, but today we're gonna mostly touch upon trees a little bit and then a uh, number of islands is mostly a graph like like a grid kind of problem so uh that would be uh based on that so let's talk about depth first search what is it right so it is like we were talking about it's an algorithm um to search or traverse a graph or a tree um so like mostly anytime you look at maybe like a like a tree or something like that uh, within lead code uh, like you have a binary tree or something binary tree is where each node has each node has two children like maximum of two children a left and a right uh, so uh, if you look at those kinds of trees like mostly it's it's just you're gonna do some kind of recursion and like you're gonna do some kind of dfs because like you know, you need to traverse the tree. You need to maybe, I don't know, find out the height of the tree or like the the uh, the width of the tree. So like it, stuff like that. So basically to have these two algorithms, not just DFS, um, but to have both the DFS and BFS in your arsenal is super important to like, you know, um, to work on any kind of problems in lead code. So yeah, um, what do you do in a DFS? So basically you go down a path and then you explore it completely and then back up and then explore a different path. Like you change, you sort of exhaust 
one single path all the way down. If you look at a tree, uh, you start off with the root node, maybe you're doing like an in-order um, traversal. If it's an in-order traversal, uh, an in-order traversal is a way of traversing down the, down the binary tree. Uh, where you start off with the left leftmost node, uh, and then the the root, and then the rightmost node. So uh, left subtree, root, right subtree. Okay. Uh, uh, I I feel like I'm going too into it, so I'll stop myself. But uh, it's basically like if you're at the root, uh, if in a in a DFS and in in order, you start you go to the left subtree first, right? So you go back to the leftmost um to the leftmost node and then you'll back up you'll you'll completely visit it until you you have no more nodes like until you're at the leaf node leaf nodes are the last nodes in a binary tree so until you're there and then once you see that there's nothing else beyond that you'll go back up and then you'll visit the root node and then you'll do the right subtree and i'm just talking about an in order traversal here so um Basically, it's just it's just that you have to exhaust it all the way down. Just remember that about DFS. It's recursive. Uh, so if it's because it's recursive, you'll use a call stack, and a stack is how we do uh, a, a recursions generally. And and if you're gonna do a, I'll I'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, so yeah. So like. For, that's for the next point we were talking about DFS being recursive, right? It's always done uh, recursively, but um, if you if you if you want to do it iteratively, and believe me, doing tree problems iteratively is so intuitive. Like you, because of solving one one problem based on like a I don't know a stack, doing a DFS using a stack on your own without using recursion you will you can literally unlock so many kinds of problems with the same pattern like literally trees gave me like confidence to to think that oh okay like i can solve problems too like you know they were specifically iteratively you know because i'm 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 not a not too much of an expert on recursion so um it's it's too out there so yeah, I'm gonna stop talking and move over to the next slide. <laughs> um, so how do we do this, right? We were just talking about DFS now. So this is a binary tree uh, and it has uh, one as the root and then you have uh, this as your left subtree and then uh, three, four, five uh, constitute the left subtree and then you have seven and 10 for the right subtree. Um, so, let's do like we were talking about if we're doing uh an in order if we're doing an in order traversal so it'll be left root and right okay so um i should have sort of you know not not written this out and asked for uh, uh asked for asked for it like a question but okay let's let's actually go through this right so what does it mean to go all the way to the to the left? Like, why do you say left root right? And why does it begin with a four instead of a three? Because like, you know, if you're starting at the root, the root is what you'd be given initially in a problem. Why do you not have three? Um, so you have to go all the way, because this is a DFS, you go all the way to the leftmost node in the tree, which is four. So initially you, you'll be at one, you'll go down, you'll go down, you'll come to a four. And then uh, you'll, 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 you'll try to go left even here, but then there's no, uh, there's no other node here. So basically you just have to return uh, whatever is here, which is four. So that's your starting point, right? And then if you look at it, if you look at this, this particular three, four, five is also a subtree within the main tree, right? So uh, in this case, four is like the left. And so what is the, what is the root? Three is the root. So from four, you'll go to three. And then now you, you'd, you'd look at the right. Um, so which is five. So three, four, five, this is done. 
And if you look at it in the big picture, in the smaller picture, this is a tree on its own. Uh, and four itself is also a tree on its own, if you look at it, because it, it has a root, um, like it has a root and you know, it, it doesn't have more than three children. So it doesn't even have children there. So each of it form like a, like a, like a tree, um, sub tree within the main tree. So, so you're at five, you visited five. So four, three, four, three, five is already here. And then, uh, now you're like, okay, now I've exhausted the left subtree. Let me go back up. So you go back to one, which is the root, because this is in order traversal. You're doing left subtree, root, and then right subtree. Okay, so one. So you'll add one to your result um, set, result uh, array or string. Uh, and then you'll do the same thing again. And this, the seven blank 10, the seven 10 thing, that's also another separate tree. Um, so uh, you within this, you'll, you'll go, you'll try to go to the left again, right? Even if it's within the right subtree of the main tree, this itself is a separate tree, right? So, and, 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 and by the order that we've mentioned here, you have to start with left root right. Um, but you see that there's no um, element here. There's no, this, this tree doesn't have a uh, left subtree. I mean, a left child. Okay. This doesn't have a left child. Uh, so you don't do anything there. But then uh, you have a root, which is seven, which is what you add here. And then you have to do your right, which is 10. And that's what you add here. And, and, and that's it. You're done. Um, so you did a left subtree, you did the root, and then you did the right subtree. And then for every small, every single sub, like every single tree within the main, uh, every single subtree within the main tree, uh, you did, you sort of did the same thing um, uh, until you hit one of those leaf nodes and then you'd have to traverse back up. So this is how it's done in a, uh, like a, you know, like in a binary tree. Uh, it's it may be different in a graph um, where you'll visit all of its neighboring vertices until you hit any one of the bounds of the graph, like like you know you can't go beyond that or like you know something like that. Um, uh, like you'd visit all of those, like you'd visit all of the vertices, or like a, if you if you have like a maze or something like that, you'll visit all of the possible paths. Like you'd visit you'd go down a possible path until you can go any further and then you'd backtrack or you'd go back. Um, so that's DFS um, in, in general. And yeah, so, so far we've just, this is just like a over, like a, a high level explanation of this. Um, so uh, is everybody okay so far? Like, are we, are we doing good? Thumbs up, maybe. Cool, loving, loving it, loving it. Okay, so uh, now we are within our BFS section of this. Like I said, it's not too concept heavy, like, um, but but like applying it will be a different game altogether. Um, but yeah, so. Breadth first search. Depth first search, as the name mentioned, was like going down, 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 down until we hit a point where you can't go any further and then you go back, back up. I don't know why I rhymed it like that, but that's that's it. <laughs> so, um, so in a breadth first search, you always would try to look for the shortest path or like the, like the closest thing. Like uh, we, we'll look at it in, in the example next, but let's just go over like a quick intro. So again, this is also an algorithm to search or like traverse through a tree or a graph. And then the only, only difference here is that um, whatever you visit, you keep track of it in a queue. Um, and then like once you hit like a condition where you don't have to go any further, you just go over to the next, uh, next element or something like that. And then you'll check if you've already visited something and it's already within that queue, the visited queue. If it's already there, then you don't need to look at it again. But 
uh, like, you know, that's the difference between this and DFS. DFS, you're basically going to have to do the same thing again, uh, like go all the way till the end. And then here you're just, you're going to do it like level by level. Um, but we'll, like the, the next example will, will help you understand that a little bit. Um, so this is done iteratively. Um, it makes sense to do this uh, iteratively because if you do BFS recursively, then it will be the same thing. Like it, it would, it would, for me, like at least for me, it doesn't really uh, have too much logic behind it because it, it, it's like this uses a queue, and and if you go back to recursion, then you'd. Uh, have to move over to the stack and then it just it it doesn't make sense to me um for some reason and i think it's pretty much the same uh like to a lot of people like uh when they try to do um a bfs they just stick to this and then when you do a dfs you would use um you would use a i mean if you do it recursively you'd use a called stack if you do it iteratively then you use a stack like you're just gonna replicate the same thing there. And then uh, with the with a BFS, you'd use a queue. So just remember these two things for sure, because anytime you do a tree problem, you're gonna really bank on these details. Um, like if you're gonna do it, like like with Python, uh, you'd use collection, you'd use the DQ within collections uh, so that, you know, like you can, you can pop from the left and then the stack, you, you you basically, um, actually a good point, a good place, I, I, I should have written this down somewhere. Um, you could also like start off by implementing a stack in a queue. This is like a general, not the session related, but like a general thing. You could implement a stack in a queue uh, in Python, like using a list, just to like basically understand uh, how it can be used within these trees and, you know, graphs and stuff later on. but. But yeah, it could be a good starting point. Um, but yeah, um, how, uh, like this is just again within the same tree. Uh, like if you've heard of the traversals within the tree, you would have heard of in order, uh, pre-order and post-order. Those are DFS uh, traversals. And then BFS would have level order traversal. So what does that mean? Um, you start level by level. Uh, you have one here, uh, the, which is the root. So you'll start with that. And then this, the next level would have three and seven. You, you, that, would be, that would be added to your result. And then four, five, and 10. That's going to be literally your, I think this is the format they use in like to, to show inputs in lead code. I don't know if it's, if it's level order traversal or like, um, or an in order that they like within the input, they don't draw trees most of the time. They just have like an input box, right? Like within each problem. I think it, it's a level order traversal. I don't remember, um, but but yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, where and when can we use them? Like we were speaking before, they can be used anywhere where we need to find something, like you know, where we need to like go over the entire like these two data structures are really common uh, trees and gra uh, graphs. Um, so maybe you just need to find find some uh, if you if you have like a target node or something, you have to look through the entire tree and find that node then you can use um, either a DFS or a BFS to find it because at most the time complexity is gonna be the, uh, in the worst case, uh, case it's gonna be uh, the length of the tree, like the length of the nodes in the tree, like you're gonna have to go through everything. So you can use either a BFS or a DFS there. And uh, so DFS, when you have to look at different possible solutions, uh, and, uh, and, you know, not like, uh, not like when you just look at the next one and then you're done, you know, not, not like that. You, you'd probably have to like a maze, like we were talking about, right. You have to, if you, if you choose a point to start at, you'd go all the way to the end 
and then you'd think, oh, okay, we we can't really use this point. Uh, like, we, we don't we don't want to go through this path. Uh, we need a different path. So we change our decision. So something like that. Uh, something we just exhaustive, you know? Yeah, like when when we need exhaustive exploration. I was really proud of myself when I when I wrote these two words because I never knew that I could form like complicated phrases or something. But but yeah. Um, so a BFS when you when you need like the shortest path, like when you have like uh, it's mostly used in path, like pathfinding within graphs, um, like when you're like when you're at a vertex, what is the shortest path to the next vertex or like something like that. Um, uh, so basically you just, you just find quick solutions and then you move on. I'm sure there are like detailed explanations about this even more, um, uh, but, but like, you know, like um, I think it, when you see these kinds of problems, you, you just know that I, I, ma I majorly, uh, try to default to like iterative solutions, like try to find my way out of recursive ones, which is not a good way to go about things. Like you need to, um, you need to um, remember to treat recursion uh, equally to um, iterative approaches because in an interview, uh, you probably will not just get, um, you know, like you, the interviewer, they will want you to talk about both, um, both possibilities when you're doing things and it would really impress them if you know iterative ones as well. So, um, and, and because these data structures, they naturally seem recursive to you, right? Like if you look at a tree, it's, it's because it's constructed that way that, that you're mostly like, okay, like this should be done recursively, right? Like just feels natural to do it that way. Um, do people give both solutions in interviews? I, I, at least you should, you should at least mention the iterative solution um, just because you like, you know, like just to show that you think about it or you, you've thought about it if you've seen the problem before. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would say like put both before them, like be confident in like showing that you know both and then like, you know, like just talk to them and ask them like, what do you, like, what do you think we should go with? You know, um, something like that. Um, okay. So we were also talking about the differences a little bit before this, but let's, let's reiterate, right? Um, it explores a path to the end, but it may keep revisiting and backtracking to the root to go down another path. If you looked at um, if we looked at our in order, we did like the entire thing and then we went back up to the root and then did that. Um, and then the level order you saw was different. So um, the memory use is obviously going to like, of course, like um, it's just the, it's just actually like if I think about it, it may be almost equal. Um, if you don't count the call stack, um, then it, it's going to be less. Um, but like, there's also many, many times when you would have been stuck with like an infinite loop. It's one of those dreaded things. Like, but it's also like, you know, you learn and then once you hit, once you get hit with it, like until you get hit with an infinite loop, according to me, uh, you know, like you're still learning. Like if you hit, get hit with it, then, you know, your journey is complete. <laughs> so, um, that's DFS, and with the BFS, uh, like we said, it's gonna it's gonna use a use a queue, and then it's gonna keep track of everything that's right next to it, like its neighbors. If it's a ver uh, vertex, neighboring vertices. If it's a node, next levels nodes. Uh, it's gonna keep track of all of it, and then it's gonna pop out from that queue, and then we're gonna visit them. So something like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, they are. Okay, um, very short start. Uh, like if if uh, if if we if some of you are joining us uh, from previous sessions, I usually ramble on for another I don't know forty five minutes generally, and then I start. But this time we're, we're here quicker. Uh, how's everybody doing? 
give me a thumbs up or something like that on chat if possible. Cool, cool. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water um, so that Karen can also like post out the, the REPL link. Yes, yes. And I may all, I'm also going to look at the questions in just a second. No, nope. take your time. So to those of you who first time joining us, uh, we use Webpool as the as the uh, the the tool that we uh, uh, the channel is going to do live coding on. And uh, I just post the link so that everyone can. Uh, assess it so a uh, quick tutorial in case this is the first time uh, so on the right hand side on the right top top right section there is a fork repo button so uh, just it's just like a github so uh, for your own repo to your own account uh, you would need a you need an account in order to build it in order to like keep keep everything on like you know under your you know, your account uh, if you don't, you can just watch Chanel to do it, like, and then like when we sign up later on. Uh, but like keep your own copy because uh, as Chanel type, uh, you guys won't be able to get the, uh, get the answer, uh, right away. So take your time. Uh, take a quick moment to do that. And, and go ahead. Just wanted to answer a couple of questions uh, about the recursive implementation of BFS. I have not done it. Like I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I felt that it just didn't, it just didn't click with me. And and like I've always like resorted to like recursive for for um, DFS and then like a Q based one for BFS because personally for me I've not been too much of a fan, um, but uh i can um like i can maybe link yeah I, i'll i'll look i think i was able to find some resources before when i was like going like creating the slides and stuff so uh i'll maybe like link that um in in the channel if you're in the lead code study group channel um then i'll link it there and then uh And then what else? Okay, so uh, when you mean the list includes the root node, did you mean for like the DFS or the BFS or um, I think I'm not uh, like, could, could you? Oh, which one was that again? Oh, sorry. Within, within this or? Okay, so we need to um, like. Are you are you asking if we would visit the root or not, or like, uh, because we need to we need to visit every single node if we're doing a traversal and if we're doing if we're just printing out uh, in this example, I'm just printing out like, yeah, we start from the root. And then we go all the way down till we till we get to that terminating condition in a recursive uh, in a recursive function. Like where uh, how this would be is that if uh, if your node doesn't have a left or a right child, then you just return like your node. Uh, th then you just append that node's value onto your result set or something like that. Or um, yeah, I think that is it. Okay. You start from your root and then you go all the way down and then you hit that terminating like um, terminating condition. Otherwise, it would go in an infinite loop. Um, so if you see that it doesn't have any left or right children, then you'll know that oh, okay, I have to add this. Um, like I have to add this to start off, and then after that, I'll visit the yeah, and then I'll visit the root of that thing, and then like. You'd, you'd naturally go back up because in a stack, if you think about it, um, you'll be at one, you'll push one, right? And then you'll be at three, you'll push three onto the stack and then you'll be at four. And then you have nothing else after four, you'll pop four out 
and then you'll check if it has left or right to run and then you don't see it that will be into your um like that would be within your results and then you still have three three is like your nodes value um i think i should have put in like a code snippet too um but three is your roots value so you have four next you'll visit three and then does three have a right it has a right so that'll be five um and then i think five will be five will be added to your uh stack again your call stack and then you'll you'll check if five has uh, any children or not and then no so that will be added to your results and then you'll go back up this whole thing is done yeah uh th th this one uh will be more of like a uh you know like a graph kind of like a grid kind of problem that we're going to talk about uh but but uh i think i'll definitely leave out some um, I'm going to make a note here because I keep forgetting things. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll make a note later because we're on time here. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's cool. So that's how like this would work um, behind the hood. But um, I think at this point it would be safe to assume that we can continue with our, with our problem. Um, okay, cool. So number of islands, this is super common. Like I, I'm, I'm not even sure how many people have talked about this or how many people have mentioned uh, that you should prepare for this question or you should have this question in your arsenal because there's like, I think number of islands too and like other parts for this. Um, so it's a very, very famous interview question. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, given an M cross N 2D binary grid, binary grid meaning, binary means just ones and zeros, right? And then 2D, so yeah, it's just a 2D matrix, uh, which represents a map of ones, ones are land and zeros are water. Return the number of islands and what do you mean when you say island? An island is surrounded by water. Um, it, it's surrounded by water and it's formed by connecting adjacent lands either horizontally or vertically. So just two ways, there's no like diagonal cutting and stuff like that. Uh, you may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. A lot of like sentences, let's break it down. Um, where is this? Okay. Um, we have an input of a 2D grid uh, of ones and zeros. That's that's what the binary grid was. Uh, and zeros are water, ones are land. Okay. What do we need to return? Um, the number of islands. Uh, so what is an island? If you have uh, any ones connected either horizontally or vertically, then that forms an island um, and and this is in diagonal okay so from like when i say uh like ones connected like even even bunches of ones like if there's one one of the ones here and then there's one here and then there's another one next to it, it it's like a it's like connecting dots or something like that where you just connect all the ones together uh so that the bunch be an island that would be one island um okay so uh how many islands are there like from what we were talking about how many islands do you think are there in this grid very good awesome yeah so why two because um you start off you, you see the first one over here and then i don't know if my pointer is showing or not but um one, one, uh, one, and also one, one, one. So like, you see, there's this tiny little triangle over here. So that's an island. Great. Um, but you can't really connect to these ones. These are separate ones, like, because they're connected to each other and they're surrounded by water after that. Um, so there are two islands here. Even if you had just a one, 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 oh God, I'm just making this difficult for myself. But um, if you just had 
a single one within the within the grid um like that would be one like your number of islands would be one it doesn't have to be like a group and stuff like that it's just one so um yeah okay so what other what other things um can we can we assume here right um like what other things do you think of when you see this like is there do you think there's a possibility of like anything other than a zero and one for your for your um 2d grid uh seems like there isn't right and then um we could also think about um is it going to be empty per lead codes constraints this problem doesn't i mean it it has, it seems to have at least one, um, like, you know, you don't, it's not like it's gonna be completely empty, but we'll still ch check, like, we, like you know, we, we never know, like, we may have um, uh, a good sort of input, we, we can't really assume. So we'll check for uh, empty, um, an empty grid as well. Uh, and if the, if it is an empty grid, you just like what would you return um, if you see that there's just an empty grid? What would the number of islands be? Yeah, that's it. So just it's a quick check there. Um, other than that, what else do we have? I think it's pretty straightforward. These seem these are not numbers. If you notice, they're strings. So yeah, um, awesome, great. So let's go to our coding section to just talk about, um, to just sort of understand how you can do this with BFS and DFS. It's cool. Okay. I'm gonna increase the font. Where's the font? Oh, okay. Go back, go back. Great. Hope everybody can see this well, right? Okay, clear enough. Awesome. So uh, within like, I usually have a habit, like we, we have this thing where we have all of the previous sessions um, and the problems we solved it within, within that in like a folder. And then uh, I call each of it within um, the main main.py file. Uh, I just import it and then uh, just put, add in some like basic test cases to see if it runs. Um, so the same with this as well, uh, I've created like a, you know, like this is, this is the number of islands file. So this, this would be within the DFS and BFS section. So if you want to revisit the other ones, it's, it's there within it. So, yeah. Um, okay. We saw, we already had that example there, right? So we're just going to work off of that. Um, and we're going to look at our approaches. So I've written it out here. I've also written the row and column indices uh, so that it's easier for us to like do stuff. I mean, go over this problem. Um, okay, so with the BFS, what do you do, right? You take uh, the, first, the first place you're at. So you're naturally gonna be at zero, zero, which is, uh, yeah, which is here. Right. So once you're here, you'd start looking at all of its neighbors. And um, as you look at each neighbor, what happens? So we're going to talk about that now. Um, I'm going to I'm going to work through this at least like uh, until you get a hang of this for this problem. Uh, for for the DFS, it, it's pretty straightforward because it's recursion. And yeah, but for this, you have to go step by step to see what happens. OK. Um, you start off with if uh, the condition where you're gonna loop over the row and column, how do you, the usual way that you'd loop over a, a 2D matrix, you do row, uh, you'd go like column wise for a row and then you go to the next row column wise for that row and then so on. So it'll be like uh, zero, 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 one, zero, two, and so on. Uh, you'll go, uh, you'll visit all the rows and all of the columns like that. Um, okay. Do we care if uh, we land on a zero? No, we don't. We only care if we land on a one. So uh, when you hit that one, 
you'd have to do a uh, you'd have to do a BFS on this particular um, uh, you know this particular position from here. Like you'd have to look at all the neighbors, and then uh, you'd have to count your islands based on that. So, how do you look at a neighbor, right? Pertaining to like um, like according to our problem, you can do diagonal stuff. You just have to do horizontal or vertical. That's why I have like the directions over here. Uh, if it is negative one and zero, suppose you're you're at zero zero, which is that particular position, right? Like any any position basically. Um, your um, if you start with the top one, uh, what is the top one? This is your current row. The row before that is going to be like negative one of of whatever you are at currently right uh, and the first uh, the first piece of this is always going to be the row the second piece is going to be the column so to denote a top neighbor uh, you decrement the row by one to go to the previous um, row but then your column remains the same because it's just the top um, like for this uh, for example if you're looking at I don't know let's let's look at this one uh, with with index um, with, with position one comma zero. So the the top neighbor of this is going to be zero comma zero. So that is one minus one, right? Like one comma zero um, to becomes zero comma zero. So that's going to be your top na uh, top neighbor. And then the the bottom neighbor is obviously a plus one on the row index, like the row. Um, yeah, the row, the rows position. So that's going to be plus one for the bottom. If you're doing a left, it's going to be a negative one because from where you're at, you're doing like I don't know if I'm yeah, um, you're doing like a negative one. Um, so you're going to decrement the column by one, and then you're going to if it's the right, you're going to increment the column by one. Uh, and for this approach, like. Uh, you could do it like this with depicting depicting this uh, the directions like this, or you could um, you know you could do it in a in a different way. Like when we're doing our BF, uh, our DFS, you like we have a different way to do it. Uh, we just decrement the row or like decrement the column and so on. So for this um, this this would apply when you're yeah you know let me let's let's just start doing it so that like we can talk about it and then do it. Um, uh, okay, so we're going to start from here. Uh, fortunately, the first one we're landing at is a one. Uh, because it's a one, you're going to do a BFS on it. Okay, so what do we do first? We're going to take, before anything, uh, before we even begin our BFS, we would need to have another visited set uh, that holds the, the position, like, you know, the row and column, uh, like, you're gonna if you've already seen it, you're gonna add it into visited. Just remember that, and then you'll uh, initialize your island count to be zero. Um, and uh, you just need these two, and then you'll start looping over it. You'll hit a one. Once you hit the one, you do the BFS. Uh, and when you go, when you the the BFS function, you you you'd start off by adding um, like. And also another thing is. If you're if you're at this one, uh, if you're at a position, if it's a one, and if it's not already within the visited set, then you do a BFS on it. You don't like if if you've already seen it within like if if you've already explored it and it's already within visited, then you don't need to see it again. So just remember that. Um, and how you start off is uh, like you add this like within your BFS function you'll add this index onto your visited uh, set first. So that's going to be like, a, like you know, you could, you could add, it, add it as a tuple or anything like that. Um, uh, I'm just going to talk about it step by step so that we like, you know, that we get uh, what we're doing here. Okay, so we're going to add it to our, to our visited set. And then we're also going to have, because it's a BFS, we spoke about having a queue, like, uh, like to actually, take care of our BFS for us. So um, we're gonna add 0, 0, 0,0 to the queue as well. Uh, and then um, we'll, we'll look at like, uh, we'll have these directions. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to, until the queue uh, has elements or until the queue has something, um, because here you're, you're doing zero comma zero. Um, yeah, uh, you're doing zero comma zero. Um, you may have other indices that you add in later, but uh, until your queue has any uh, tuple, you're going to keep looping like, okay. So uh, once you're, once you start looping, you, you begin with popping off from the queue. Okay. D just trust me on this while we go through it, it'll get better. Okay. So you pop, pop left from the queue and then you'll basically for each direction here, you will sort of add it to your, like your, you know, like the popped value. Um, so if it's negative one, uh, like this is going to be your topmost. If you look at it here, you're trying to find a top um, for this one, which is at zero comma zero, um, but like you don't have it. So what do you do in that case, right? Before any, before we do any kind of computation, we need to make a check that it, it doesn't go out of bounds. If it goes out of bounds, uh, or if we are in an index, uh, like, a, like a position, which is already within the visited set, um, or like, you know, if you hit on like a zero or something, then like, if, if, you, if you don't, uh, I mean, if you do get into those conditions, you can't, like, you, you don't need to do a BFS on, I mean, you, you don't need to loop over it. You just continue with the next uh, next iteration. So, like uh, for example, you you've cho like you popped out of the queue. You're at zero zero. You're looking at the top. Like there's no neighbor there. Um, next, you'll you'll basically uh, because there's no neighbor there. You don't even go into that condition. So you'll go to the next um, to the next neighbor. Like the top neighbor doesn't really have anything for us. Right from here, from this position. So we'll, ooh, did I start a thread? Okay. So you'll do the bottom neighbor, which is uh, one comma zero. And then what you'd first do is, and, and you're seeing that it's not within the visited set uh, and it, it is not out of bounds. And uh, I'm talking about specifically one comma zero, right? So um, it's not within visited, it's not out of bounds. Uh, it's 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 a one um, and it, like it's not a zero. So this is a good um, this is a good uh, neighbor to take, right? So you'll add that. You'll add the index like the position, the indices onto your queue, and then you'll also add it onto your visited because you have visited it. Um, and then uh, and then you'll you'll again your your Q is still not um, like your Q, Q is still not done, uh, and you still have to do uh, these neighbors as well, right? So uh, the, you, you've done the top and the bottom. To the left, you have nothing, right? The, this is the first element. There's nothing, so you don't really add anything to your Q or your visited set. Um, to the right of it, um, uh, you see a zero. Like we said, we don't care about it. Um, we only care about neighbors that form a one, uh, that, that have a one, so that you can count it to the island. Um, so we don't care about this either. Um, okay, so uh, after this, what, like, we've seen all the four directions, but our queue is still not empty, right? You still have an element, uh, I mean, you still have a tuple over here. So we're gonna visit that next. So we're gonna visit this next. We're gonna pop left. Uh, we're gonna pop it out of the queue because that's how, um, like, you know, that's how a queue works. The first person enters, the first person leaves. What is that algorithm called again? Um, yeah. So you take this, the next one, um, and then this is one comma zero, right? Okay. So you start looking. Um, you're gonna do the same drill, top bottom, left, right. Okay, so top uh, zero comma zero. Uh, it's already within the visited set, cool. So we can't, we don't really need to look at it. Um, so you're gonna look at the next neighbor, which is the bottom neighbor. This is two comma zero. Is this present within visited? No, 
you're going to add it two comma zero okay and then you'll also add it to your queue two comma zero okay and then uh next you're going to do um yeah we were here right okay so you're going to do the left um it doesn't have anything on the left yeah so like um basically you just you have it within a queue to keep track of all the things you've already explored uh, within this particular, uh, like, you know, within this iteration, like if you, uh, the visited set is for like the entire, like the entire grid, whatever we've seen, you don't have to see it again, that kind of a thing. Um, okay, I'm just gonna continue with it so that we don't, um, like we, we keep going. Okay, we, we don't have a left here, so, be continued to the right. And then um, here you see it's a one comma one. Uh, one comma one is not within the visited set nor is it within the queue. So we're just gonna add it. Um, you're gonna add this as well. Okay. Uh, at this point, you're done with all your neighbors for this, like this one comma zero position, but we still have like elements in our queue. So we're gonna pop left, right? Um, we're gonna pop left. Don't know why I'm singing, but okay. So now we're at um, two comma zero. Great. Uh, we're going to okay, we're here, right? So we're going to do the same thing: top, uh, bottom, left, and right. Uh, top is one comma zero, right? This is the this is the element to the top of this one comma zero. Is it present within the visited set? Seems to be. So we don't care about it because we've already seen it. Um, and then um, next we do, uh, yeah. So next we, over here, okay. Uh, bottom, it's out of bounds, you don't care. Left, it's out of bounds, you don't care. Go to the right one. Uh, and then this is a two comma one, right? Like per indices over there. Uh, it's not with, within the visited set. So you add it, it's not within like, because you're, because it's a valid set to add, you're gonna add it within the queue um, as well. Two comma one, okay. Um, so now at this point, you're, where are you? Okay, you're here, you finish this. And then you're again at like, you're seeing like your neighbors are done, the four neighbors are done, but then the queue is still not empty. Um, so you're gonna pop, uh, pop left. Okay, fun stuff, pop left. Um, now you're at one comma one. Uh, one comma one is here, right? Uh, so same thing. Look at the top, top is a zero, we don't care. Um, look at the bottom, which is two comma one. Two comma one is already within visited, we don't care. Um, go to the left, do we have something here? Um, like it's one comma zero, one comma zero is already within this, you don't care, move on. Um, this is a zero, you don't care about it either, so you move on. Okay, great, uh, that's done. So now we see that, you know, like our queue is still not empty. So we're gonna have to pop left again. Um, pop left, which is this, right? Okay, uh, so this is two comma one. We're at two comma one right here. Uh, by this time, you, you understand what we're doing here. Uh, top neighbor. Um, Top neighbor is one comma one is one comma one. Yeah, it's already within here. You don't need to look at it or like add it or anything. Um, and then all oh, this was two comma one, right? Okay. Top bottom is out of bounds. You don't care. Uh, left is two comma zero. Two comma zero is already in the set. Visited set. You don't care. Um, and then you look at the right. Um, the right is. Uh, two comma two, which is not here. Uh, surprise, surprise. So we're gonna add it um, within the um, visited set. And then uh, next we're going to add it. We're also gonna add it here, forgot about this. Okay, we're 
we're also going to add this. So if you see the queue is still not empty, so you're going to pop out again, uh, pop left again, pop left, you're basically out. Um, so now you're at 2,2, two, which, is, which is here. You see the top. Uh, it's a zero. We don't care. Um, you look at the bottom. It's out of bounds. We don't care. You go to the left, which is this. Um, what is this? This is 2, 1. 2, 1 is already in the visited set. You don't care. Um, and then the right is a zero. Um, you, you still don't care because it's a zero. Um, and then, believe it or not, we are done for this particular, like we've done the BFS for 0, 0. Um, So this is all of that. So we visited and we figured out that this whole thing over here is one island. And then once you do that, once you finish the BFS in the main function, you just increment your island by one because that's all the groups that you saw, right? Like your entire group, you count it as one because that's one island, right? So that's done. Um, great. Um, let me delete this. Okay. So we're doing column wise. I'm, I'm just waiting for us to get to this part and then like we'd be done. I mean, actually we typically be done when we get here, but for time's sake, we're, we're just going to skip um, we're just going to assume that we're done. Um, so you finished BFS on this. Next, you come to this. It's a zero. You don't care. You move on, right? You get to a one. And then um, this is, what is this? Two, zero comma two. Is zero comma two within the visited set? Nope. So you're going to add it. Zero comma two. Um, and then once you once you add, add it into, oh, wait. Sorry, this should have, oh yeah, this, okay. For this, um, you won't add it immediately, but uh, if you hit a one uh, in the outer portion without not the BFS portion of our solution, if you hit a one, uh, if it's not, if the, those, if that position is not already within visited, you do a BFS on that, um, on the, on that one you're at. So you're doing a BFS on this now, right? So. Uh, and once you get into the BFS, like the the, um, the the meat of the program, like of the function, um, then it'll be like a zero two, right? It's it's not like you you start off by adding it to the visited set and then to the queue, and then you'll uh, you'll do like a you, you'll keep checking um, until your queue is empty or not, and then you'll do it for all your four neighbors. Um, Okay, so I'll finish this. So it is zero comma two. Um, you're adding that to this. I mean, you're adding that to the visited set. You're also gonna add it to your queue. And then you're gonna pop left again because you've come to your, like you're gonna have to check all the neighbors of this thing, right? So you're at zero. I mean, th this, is at, this is at zero comma two, which is here. And then um, you're gonna look at its top neighbor. There's nothing there, it's out of bounds. Um, you're gonna look at the bottom, it's a zero, we don't care. Uh, you're gonna go to the left, left is a zero, we still don't care. Uh, you go to the right, uh, so zero comma three, it's a one, uh, zero comma three is not already present in your visited, so you add it. Great. Um, once you're here, uh, next, you'd, you'd also add it to your queue, obviously. Okay. And then, um, yeah, we looked at all the directions of this. Okay, great. So again, queue is not empty, pop out, um, pop left, and then uh, you'll, you'll start looking again, right? Um, what is the top um, neighbor? There's, there's no neighbor, out of bounds. Um, the uh, the bottom one has a zero. We don't care. And then the um, the one to the the one to the left is zero comma two. It's a one, but but it's already within uh, the visited set. So we we're not going to talk about it or visit it. Um, and then to the right, you see it's a zero. So we don't care. And at this point, you'll uh, you'll come out of your BFS, and then you'll increment by one. Like after your BFS, you'll increment island count by one. I should have done that here. So it was initially one after this whole thing. And then once you hit this, it becomes a two. 
uh, and then you'll do the same thing uh, for like zero uh, and then you'll see one one is already invisited you don't like you won't visit it again this is already invisited zero 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 you you won't check it um <laughs> yeah and then uh these guys are already within the visited set you still don't look at it <sighs> and then uh zero zero uh you don't care believe it or not you're done with the bfs it just took us 40 minutes um, but we're, we're done with the BFS uh, and we'll just return an island count of, um, we'll return the island count of two. That's it. So like, it is fun. Like I don't particularly like it with graphs or like grids and stuff, but I like it with trees. So I basically use BFS a lot with trees because it's fun. Um, okay. Um, for time and space, as you noticed, we're basically going over the entire thing, right? We need to go over the entire thing. Um, so, uh, so that's that's going to be like your entire um, search, like your grid. So that's uh, all m times n, and then the space as well. Uh, you're at most at the worst. Uh, I I think leak code has a different. Uh, um, space complexity mentioned, but I feel like it's going to be worst case uh, um, um, m cross n um, because of that, like the visited set for sure. I feel like that's going to hold all of it. And then, um, you know, like I think even the Q, but, but, but yeah. Um, okay, so now let's talk about DFS. This is simple because we're not going to um, we're not going to be doing all of those like crazy stuff for recursion. The one thing that I've read before, because I'm more of an iterative kind of person, so like I tend to think of like all kinds of possibilities. But with recursion, you just have to trust trust that your base condition will hit. Once it hits it, it'll work. Okay, like you don't have to you don't have to like keep thinking of every single possibility. So yeah. Um, cool. So let's, let's take, um, uh, let's take this grid. Uh, it's not the same as above, um, uh, but, but it's, it's pretty much like, if you, if you actually think about it, um, like what are the number of, like, what is the number of islands? What is the number of, I don't know if it's an S or R, but it's an S. Okay. So what do you think is the number of islands here? so that we can like quickly move on to the next portion for, for this one, for this grid. Yeah. Everybody else get why it's a one? Thumbs up or anything at this point? Did I bore you already or? Okay. Yeah, perfect, perfect, awesome. So why is it a one? Because everything's connected together. Like Jennifer was saying, they're all connected together. They just form one, one, and, and they're not connected diagonally. They, they connect to each other either horizontally or like vertically, which is what we want. Great. Um, okay, so for a DFS, just think of this. If you land on a one, um, then you have to do a DFS on that cell and all of its neighbors, okay? So what do you do within this DFS? Um, if you don't go out of bounds, the same thing as before, if you don't go out of bounds or if you don't land on a zero, leave the visited set for this one, this is different than BFS, forget all about it. Um, but uh, if you don't go out of bounds, if we go out of bounds or if we land on a zero, you just return zero, that's your base condition because this is a recursive situation right now. So um, if, you, if you're at any one of these like weird cases, you just return a zero, don't think about it. Otherwise, um, it means you're at a valid position and wherever you are at is a one, right? It's, it's land. Um, if you're in that case, then you sync it. That's what uh, everybody says about this problem. You sync, you make it, like when you say sync this cell, it means turn the one to a zero because you don't want to keep visiting it over and over because this is recursive, right? 
um, this may be considered as a valid cell in another uh, case, like in another uh, iteration, if you don't sync it. So make it into a zero uh, and then look at all of its neighbors, top, bottom, left, and right. Do the same, visit all of those neighbors, do the same thing, sync them, like make them into zeros. And then once you finish that entire thing where you've like hit one of these conditions, right? Where you land on a zero or you go out of bounds, you'd naturally return a zero. And once all of this is done, you would, for that entire, if you start your DFS here, for this entire island, you'd return one. So within your DFS, at the end, you would just return a one because you need to account for that entire bulk of you know thing that you saw. So you just return a one. And then in your like main in in your where you call your DFS, you just increment by uh, your DFS function every single time, right? It, it, it can be a one like you'd keep incrementing by whatever DFS returns. DFS is going to return an integer. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So at the end, once like I think when you code when we code this out, it'll become better. Uh, I didn't want to go over every single iteration because like it's similar to BFS. It's just that you're gonna sync everything that you see and like you're going to visit all of its neighbors. You're gonna iteratively, sorry, recursively look at all of uh, the current cell's neighbors and you're going to um, perform DFS again. So that would again sync those neighbors and so on and so forth. Um, at the end, you just return uh, the number of islands. Great, time and space. Um, what do you, what do you think the time is? Um, uh, put it down in the chat for the DFS, the even the state, like if you, if you look at the DFS, you're still doing the entire, like you still have to go through everything. So what do you think, um, would be like the uh, time for this algorithm? Previously we had M cross N for BFS. Okay. Um, uh, so even for the DFS, it's going to be the entire, the entire search space, your entire grid. So in, like instead of M cross M, it's just O of grid. So like your entire grid, you're gonna look at everything. The space uh, uh, worst case is um, the entire grid again, um, because your call stack, yeah, yeah. Uh, so your time, sorry, your time complexity is going to be n times n, and then your space complexity. Suppose the entire thing, like everything is everything's a one. Okay, like your your entire grid is one island or something. Um, so. So in that case, um, so in that case, your call stack will have literally all of all of these. Like, like if you if you're gonna start um, doing a DFS from one portion, you you're gonna do it for the entire grid till you reach the end, and then you'll return whatever, like a zero or one or whatever. But till you get to that point, till you get to that out of bounds kind of point, you're gonna keep adding entries into that call stack which is going to still be the worst case of O of M times N. So that's, that's, what, like, that's what the space complexity is as well. Okay, so let's quickly code this out and I'll talk while I code so that we, like, we understand like, you know, where we're going with this. And I'm like, believe it or not, I'm gonna do the DFS one um, because it just seemed to, the first time I did this problem, it was with DFS, and I just felt it it it, it appealed to be more more in this case. So I'm gonna uh, do it with that. Awesome. Start off. Uh, what are we gonna check? We're gonna check if our grid has things within it or not. My uh, my words are becoming lesser and lesser. Okay. So if um, your length of grid uh, equals zero or which means like the entire grid, or if you if your if your column is equal to zero, right? Uh, okay. 
equals zero, just return a zero, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna go down a little bit so that we, I'm also gonna keep this open. Okay. So now we're gonna initialize our num islands to zero, okay? And then we're gonna start iterating right, for um, row in range of length of grid. Awesome. And then, like I said, we're gonna do something like this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get weird as like, I keep talking, I get super like hyper and stuff, but yeah. So uh, for column in range, uh, length of grid of row, right? What are we gonna do? Um, we're going to increment namilins by our DFS. Okay. We haven't written the function yet. We're just gonna have it. Oh, before that, um, you can do it for everything, right? So if if you land uh, if you land in in a one, right? Equals. Um, equals one, um, then you do, then you do a DFS. What do you, uh, what do you pass in? You pass in your row, your, your column, like wherever you're at, and then your grid uh, at that current time. <clears throat> and then um, at the end of it, you just return num islands. I'm so sorry for going so much over time, bear with me, okay. So once we, this looks nice and clean, but we haven't initialized this or did anything here. So you're gonna do that quickly, um, right? You're gonna you're gonna have a method here. Um, just gonna start off with the pass. Uh, so what are we passing in here? Um, row, column, and then grid, right? Okay. So base condition and then recursive case, right? That's how a, a recursive, that's how you generally look at a recursive function, base case, recursive case, that's it. So what is the base case when it goes out of bounds or when you land on a zero? Okay, so if your row is lesser than zero or your row is greater, greater than or equal to your length of grid or, or column um, is lesser than zero or column, is greater than or equal to length of grid of that particular row, right? Okay. Or you land on, um, wow, well, okay. You land on a uh, zero. In that case, in that case, you just return a zero and uh, structuring it weirdly. I'm gonna do this just for now. Okay. Otherwise, sync, visit all neighbors, return one. That's it. Pretty simple. Okay. So how do you sync it? Just convert the particular. Like if you're at this place, you know that you're at a valid point or a va valid area. So you're gonna do that. And then um, yeah, so the DFS function returns an integer. Uh, it returns that particular, like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it while I do it. I'm sorry that I missed that. Um, so you're gonna change it into a zero because it was already a one, right? Because you're at a valid position, which is not already, which is not out of bounds, which is not like this, which is not a zero. So, so how would you know that you visited it? Because like, if you turn it into a zero, you won't visit it again, you'll um, return a zero. So sync it, and then what are its neighbors? Um, oh, DFS, DFS of, um, okay, top, top would be, um, top would be grid of, what is your, oh no, sorry, what am I doing? Okay, your top is going to be row minus one, column, and then grid, right? Top is that, okay. 
And then your bottom neighbor is going to be row plus one column. And then you pass in your grid. If you notice, this is literally like, this is literally what we're doing. So you've already visited the top neighbor and then your bottom neighbor. And then um, uh, this is going to, this is going to be left, right? So your row stays the same, your column decreases by one and then grid and then DFS again to, for the right uh, neighbor. Um, row stays the same, column increment by one, and then grid. You pass in your grid, great. But we also have to return one um, because like once you sync everything, like, you know, you need to um, account for this entire mass of things, stuff that you visited all of those neighbors, right? So you return one. Um, once this is done, this is gonna return a one here for, for for this case, it's just going to return one one, and that's it. Um, that's our solution. Uh, um, believe it or not. Uh, so I'm gonna. I had a couple test cases here. Um, this one is what is it? Uh, one. Yeah, this is a one, uh, right? This is literally what we were seeing uh, just now. So the island count for this is one, and then it should return a one, right? And then for this problem it is one two and then three so it's going to return three for this case for this one it's a one for this one it's a three uh let's just hope i didn't make any mistakes um let's run it oh okay not sure if it's like super visible or not but we see a one and a three here great um so that's that's about it for the coding portion of this. Um, so quick stuff. I'll, I'll just take like 10 seconds. Um, so uh, for like for to start off, what are the next steps to take from here for a DFS? Like I said, do those uh, tree traversals, like the in order, pre order, and post order. Do them on your own. Do it recursively and iteratively. That's where we all start. Um, and then go to complicated tree problems that you see. And then uh, for BFS, do the level order traversal, just because I really love trees, um, like the, the tree tree and this tree. So um, just work, start with that. And then uh, because they are also like pretty quick, you, if you do like, I, I did trees for an entire week and I could never get, get it out of my head after that. So. If you do it like that, then yeah, you know, trees. So trees first and then matrices. Uh, I mean, these kinds of problems like number of islands, they're actually gra graph problems, but there's also tougher ones like course scheduler and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, do it for an entire week. You, for sure, you, you'd have it in your head by then. Um, and also like, like I said, try to do these iteratively and recursively. Also try to do this validate binary search tree problem it's a really fun i think it's an easy problem i think um just try it out but but do it like this to get like confidence first and then uh, go from there and then yeah q a um do we have time we have four minutes um i'm gonna assume like um uh, so just a quick one last one uh, it's more like a share experience i think uh jennifer mm -hmm. just asked if op uh like uh optical oriented programming will use a lot of bfs and bfs and how often do you find to you like, to use like these two in general oh okay in general i'm just i'm just gonna i'm gonna be super open it's just that i I think our, uh, if you look at GitHub and stuff, right? How is it actually structured? I think GitHub internally, I don't know if it's a tree or a linked list, um, but like, you know, like those branches and stuff, like there are many applications that we will have, like that companies will have generally, if you're talking about it that way. Um, uh, but, but, but like, uh, other than that, I, I always like tend to look at these, like, okay, these are like, basic like super important computer science algorithms that we need to know just because knowing this will give us more intuition to do other kinds of things in real life um 
So uh, that's that's how I always look at these. I, I, I never say that like these kinds of interviews are like broken or anything like that. Like you see a lot of folks saying, um, but but yeah, um, that's my, I don't know if I answered your question, but but yeah, that's, that's my take on this. Um, yeah, so a couple of other stuff like, um, the, the usual stuff, um, the lead code study group, like repo uh, link and the REPL link, and then PRAMP is a mock interview platform. I think they combined with Exponent or something, like it's another company, I think. I still hope they have free uh, mock stuff. So yeah, and then try to join the weekly and the bi-weekly lead code contest. Even if you don't do, they're like full problems. Even if you're not able to do it, just join it, it's fun. Uh, Karen, you want to take over? Yes. So thank you very much, everyone joining. So uh, this is actually the last section of uh, the Lico in this year, 2021. Uh, so we will be resuming in January, late, late, like mid January. So everyone can have a break, enjoy the Christmas time, enjoy the way you guys eat turkey. Yes, turkey. Uh -huh. Um, or chicken. So everyone is, so yeah, so stay connected with us. If this is the first time, please join us on Slack. So that's, um, that's where all the communication uh, we will do. Uh, is any like exciting event or like any announce, important announcement, we do everything on Slack. So please, please join us. And also you can find, you know, it's, it's a very, nice community and you can share your own thought you know you find help as well so um so for this year for this year we will have two more so we will have a member meet in greece so we can meet our other fellow members of the women of Python track on december 11 and then on december the 5th uh, the 13th, we will have a track and year end of year party. So all the did you trend like we will go by, then we will cloud data science, uh, really finance, uh, maybe joining in so everyone can have a party and enjoy it together. Right. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. Uh, thank you, thank, thank you, you Chandler, for the amazing session. Uh, you, so you guys much. learn as much as me from Chalina and we will see you all in next year. Remember to join us. Yay, party. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Bye, everyone.